Next on the list, I forgot to actually talk about this. This happened a couple of weeks ago, but um, uh, or a few weeks ago, three weeks ago, actually, specifically. But some bad news for some of my um, German friends and Berlin friends out there, specifically. Um, it looks like the Berlin rent cap is illegal. Germany High Court has ruled. So um, if you're not familiar, Berlin had this like weird rent cap thing that they, I think, put into effect. I'm going to, not without reading the article, I'm pretty sure sometime before the early 2000s. But essentially, it was a way to sort of protect local homeowners and renters um, from making sure that they have a property to live in. Um, obviously, with the surge in, you know, techno tourism and tourism in general and foreign investors coming in and buying up properties, they didn't want the local population to be priced out of the housing market. So they kind of implemented this, this rent cap, which would mean that, you know, cap uh, the rent couldn't go over a certain amount, which makes it super affordable. Not, of course, like the heyday, but still within reason that, you know, a young kid, or somebody raising a family could easily go and kind of live there, work a, a pretty decent job and be able to you know pay rent and all the other necessaries in order to kind of keep your life going. And then um and then I think the big inflection point came, if I remember correctly, with Airbnb. I forgot when it was, but there was a period where Airbnb flats in Berlin were like a crazy amount. And then the rent cap came in and then a lot of those Airbnb flats got taken off the site and then you couldn't get an apartment anymore. But then a lot of the people that I knew that moved over there were finding places really easy. So it was a kind of a weird sort of like give and take. It meant that international tourism, international tourists maybe find it a bit more difficult to find accommodation for like a short techno weekend but then it meant a lot of my friends who moved over there to work for startups or to go and pursue their musical careers were able to kind of get on their feet because there were properties that you could rent now don't get me wrong renting a property in berlin is a whole exercise in itself right don't you know any if you know any friends that have had to kind of go through all those viewings and stuff it's an absolute you know ball ache to do that right it's probably harder to get a flight in berlin and maybe to get a flipping uh, you know uh, to be accepted into harvard or something it's really insane or mit or something it's really really nuts but that rent cap, it was able to kind of, you know, just restore some level of parity in terms of life um, over there in the big capital. But it looks like the highest court has ruled it to be unconstitutional. So let's read it from The Guardian. It says Germany's highest court has ruled that a rent cap imposed by the Berlin state government is illegal, dealing a huge blow to those who have campaigned to keep the city affordable. The constitutional court in Krausch, how do you say that? You say Karl... Karlsruhe, 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 Karlsruhe overturned the law on Thursday, saying that lawmakers in the state had no right to integrate the law, one of the most controversial and debated pieces of legislation in recent years. The rent cap came into force in February last year, freezing rents from 1.5 million, 90% of Berlin flats at the start of their 2019 level for five years. New rents could not go beyond that level, and from November 2020, existing rents that were still above there had been reduced, which is why I remember seeing a lot of my people that I follow on Twitter from Berlin celebrating that the rent had been reduced so it meant that they get you know they'll be able to kind of you know save a little bit of extra money have some extra money at the end of the month in order to kind of do what they need to do so that was great it continues the model has the model was held internationally as a triumph by those striving to retain the social mix in cities, particularly in Berlin, where affordability has been one of the key attractions, but where rents have been soaring for years, fueled in large part by the hedge fund and private equity firms buying up swaths of the city's property over the several decades. One estimate is that the rent rose by almost a third between 2013 and 2019. That's a big jump in it. Madness. It's crazy because I guess it's cheap in context. But I guess if you were living there since 2005, the rent you're paying now is going to be exorbitant compared to that, especially compared to like, you know, um, the rent you pay and the space that you're allocating in terms of, you know, square per inch, whatever it may be. Um, it continues, but landlords and property investment lobbyists argued it was inappropriate and illegal for the state to medi uh, to meddle with the private market. Um, the legal uh, the legal case was brought by landlords backed by politicians from the Conservative Christian Conservative Christian Democratic Union, Jesus Christ, Christian Social Union Alliance and the Pro-Business Free Democracy Party who claimed it was unconstitutional on the ground a state government has no right to interfere in housing policy which is responsibility of the federal government very true and the interesting thing about all this stuff when you hear people talking about you know um, gentrification and shit from what i understand especially when you look at especially when you look at some urban areas or some cities um most cities i imagine especially from people within my family and extended family 
the way that they were able to really attain or to kind of amass some level of like financial freedom and then maybe get to a point where they may be somewhat wealthy was via the property market. So the property market is one of the best equalizers because it does give a chance to people, regardless of what walk of life you're from, to get some sort of footing in the city that you now call home, um, to obviously have something to pass down to your children and obviously a, a way for you to kind of make passive income if you're kind of smart with how you rent it out and all that malarkey. So when some people lobby against this sort of thing, it's actually lobbying against people who are quite, by their origin, working class, right? Immigrant people who've kind of come to the country in order to kind of seek, you know, riches and, and you know, and health and whatever, maybe an education for their kids. And um, the one way that they can kind of do that without, you know, um, incurring too much debt is to get on a property ladder. And, you know, some of these, of course, a lot of the, a lot of it mostly has been driven by, you know, the companies like Airbnb, Novation, not Novation, they already stayed there. What's up when I went there? Airbnb, I'm going to say City Map, but they've got a location there too, right? A lot of startups are, are kind of got headquarters over in Berlin. They, I'm sure, are making some mm -hmm. of the prices go up. But it's interesting how that kind of debate doesn't really get spoken about too often, right? How most of the homeowners, I that I've kind of encountered, especially within my immigrant sort of like community, they've kind of used you know getting on a property ladder as a way to kind of amass wealth and kind of move themselves up the socio-economic ladder it continues the cow how do you say that the cows call um said that the federal government had f already forged a law 120 years ago regulating uh, rental rights a state government was not allowed to introduce its own legislation that effectively undermined the federal law critics of the law have argued that the rent cap is skewing the market ultimately having a detrimental effect on renters um since it's ineffective since it's effectively discouraged building companies from constructing new homes in Berlin, which is very true, feeling the demand for existing stock. Landlords have increasingly introduced a, how do you say that? Statenmeiter. Um, is it that? Shai, shai? Shatten, shatten meter? Is it shatten meter? Or shatten meter? Or shadow rent clause into the rental contracts which renters were informed they would have to pay in court case over time the rent camp. While Renters' Rights Association have called the clause unlawful, landlords have said that they have the right to claim back higher rents that they say they were owed since the rent cap came into force. So not only are the rents going up, they're going to reclaim on all the months that they've missed out. Oh, my God. Oh, and property lawyers are expected to see a large number of rental rows over the issue. Sebastian Schuler, a Berlin senator, um, uh, responsible for the urban development, spoke at a disappointment the decision. He said it was now a responsibility of the federal government either to introduce an effective rent control law or to ensure and cities retain affordable housing or to pass competence to the Germany 16 states. Or they could just go out and build more homes, in it. That's one of the things you realize with these flipping uh, people, man. Like, God damn it, these politicians are just build more homes, make more affordable housing. There's so much space in Berlin. If you go to some of the outskirts or even some of the inner city places, there are loads of abandoned buildings that have been basically left derelict. Um, they've not really been given any sort of care and attention. And then, you know, foreign investment comes in and buys up the whole flipping block, turns it all into shiny, you know, apartment buildings and co-working spaces, then kind of drives up the cost of, you know, a cup of coffee because obviously everyone working there has a high disposable income. It's just a complete shit show. But if you actually went out there and actually tried to, you know, build some affordable housing for the population that already live in there, it could help to kind of get things back to some level of parity. But at the moment, it just seems to be only catered or skewed towards one t one group of people, right? Do you know what I mean? It's obviously going to be fairly, um, very much beneficial to the landlords and obviously very beneficial to the foreign investors who are going to come in and buy up large swaths of kind of uninhabited uh, places all over Berlin and some inhabited. So it wouldn't surprise me if a lot of my friends end up getting kicked out of the apartments that they're in or priced out. It's just going to be an absolute horror show. And it's such bad timing too, right? Germany's already going through an absolute horror horror show when it comes to covid and now off the back of that they're now having to deal with the likelihood that their rents are going to go to an astronomical level and you know they are they you know that now the rent cap's gone there's not going to be any sort of you know fairness in terms of the rent that you pay similar to what happened here in the uk when it spoke about tuition fee and the tiers and stuff and i think the band was like six to nine every university just charged nine why are they going to charge six if they can get away with charging nine for the same course it was an absolute horror show so again um blessings and prayers go out to all my berlin friends hope you guys are gonna be okay and sort it out hopefully the protests in the streets can make some sort of level of difference and you can get to some place where you can have the ability 
to live inside your apartments that you've kind of lived in for you know many many years and contributed overall to the overall landscape of that city and be able to live there for a long long time talking about germany we have this news here germany sets a new european record um with one million coronavirus vaccinations in a day which is great a good uptick again whether or not this actually means i'm going to be able to go to berlin anytime soon to go have my techno weekend is something that's going to be left up to the gods i'm okay i'm okay with that i think um, i'd much rather see my friends and the community out there um get back on their feet and just be healthy and whatever that opens up it opens up that's not really the priority at this moment it's just it's just sad to see a country that you would kind of associate with being precise and very to the letter and kind of methodical being completely you know taken out by the knees with covid they haven't really dealt with it at all in a in a, in a great way whether it comes to the how merkel was responding to the vaccines or the rollout or the skepticism it's just been a real disaster from beginning to end so hopefully with this news it means that there is some light in the tunnel and they're going to get back to some level of normality very very soon and if that means i have to wait a few more months um to get back you know to go and clubbing over there again and queuing outside the Bergheim and going to about blank and golden gate and pamela and all this sort of stuff then now wait i'm not i'm okay to wait i'm okay to wait 